You're very, very welcome, Simon. Uh, Simon is a Marie Curie Fellowship uh, Fellow coming from Norway. You were not a fellowship, you were a fellow. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, we are delighted to hear about your talk. I'm sure it will be of interest to many of us here. Um, if we have clarifying questions, you can ask them as you go along. Um, and we have about 45, 50 minutes hmm? to do your talk. So thank you. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah for having me in your beautiful center. Uh, great, uh, I'll be here for the week working with uh, Christian on a, on a study that I think we'll present to you tomorrow. Uh, uh, and welcome your feedback on this one, uh, even more so. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, today I'm, I'm going to, to present um, uh, um, a study that I've, I've been doing for, for some time. Um, with um, a few collaborators that I want to acknowledge before anything. Um, and uh, we recently submitted this uh, study um, yeah, as a manuscript to, to Cognitive Science and currently waiting to hear back uh, from them. But those are our collaborators. We all, uh, we all, uh, yeah, we all worked on what I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to present. So uh, I'm going to talk a lot about the kinship uh, and gestures and, and thoughts and sorts of things. So yeah, please, if some concepts uh, you may not be familiar with, please uh, feel free to uh, to interrupt for, for me to clarify those concepts. Uh, be happy to try at least. Um, so thinking about kinship first. Um, I mean, as adult uh, thinkers and speakers, it's it's always of course feel very. Uh, automatic, natural, easy to, to, to think about our, our, our families and how we are related to, to, to these people. Uh, but this is uh, below, uh, uh, I mean, there is, uh, there is some um, pretty complex cognitive processes happening uh, uh, in order for us to understand that, for example, if I am his sister, that means he's my brother, right? It seems very obvious, but uh, those mechanisms are acquired uh, quite late in, uh, in life, so around uh, four or five years old. Uh, so perspective taking is, uh, is an important um, uh, mechanism, process uh, in, the, in understanding family relations. Uh, and another one is relational reasoning, right? So for example, if I know that Tom is my brother and that Jay is Tom's cousin, well, then that means that Jay is my cousin. Right. So once again, feels very easy, obvious. Uh, well, uh, it is. Uh, it is not at every stage of life. Right. Uh, and so the interesting uh, part is that uh, some family relations are grouped in different ways across uh, cultures. Apologies if you know all that. I, I don't know every anyone's background actually. <laughs> so, so sorry if I. Yeah, uh, repeating things you already know. Uh, but so, um, yeah, uh, different cultures, societies of the world tend to group some family members together or uh, to group them distinctive from, from others. So, for, exa for example, in the so-called uh, Hawaiian uh, uh, type of kinship uh, structure and uh, also, therefore, in the Hawaiian language, uh, the term for brother and uh, male cousin are the same. Right, it's a kai, kai kuane, um, kai kuane for both. Right, well, in English it isn't. Right, we have two distinct, um, two distinct uh, term, brother and uh, and cousin. Those, uh, those oops, no, those uh, those things are part of kinship diagrams. You may have seen them. Those, this is the classical, traditional way of representing kinship relations in in in, in anthropology. How we don't need to go into the details, but uh, this is ego, right? Like you always talk about an ego, uh, the center of perspective. I'll talk about the origo uh, a bit later. And, uh, and so here that means uh, these are parents uh, of ego. These are siblings, genetic siblings of ego. That's the brother of the father, so the paternal uncle who has kids. So yeah, these are the cousins, uh, the male cousin and the male, um, the male brother. Right. Just to give you some keys, because they, they will appear a bit later. But again, interrupt me if this isn't clear. Yeah, so um, uh, this um, typology of kinship structures uh, is uh, 
perhaps the most uh, productive focus in, 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 in anthropology. Uh, uh, a lot of papers and books have been written on it, and, and uh, Murdoch uh, typology uh, is, uh, is quite famous and quite old also. Uh, and one of uh, Murdoch and, and others who followed uh, hypothesis was that was that um, kinship categorization is shaped by social structure. And what he means by that is that he, f he found some correlation uh, between, for example, the Hawaiian kinship terminology uh, and uh, ways of categorizing cousins and siblings together as a way to encode the taboo that in a Hawaiian society or, yes, you're, you're not supposed to marry your cousins. Right. So by extension of the incest taboo of you're not supposed to marry your siblings, if your cousins are named like your siblings, that means they are as if they were your brothers, so therefore you should not marry them. Right. Uh, and there is some um, recent studies uh, that I will refer to later, which with a much more systematic approach and a much larger sampler of languages, uh, around 2000, who have found some, uh, yeah, some, uh, some of these uh, correlations. Uh, between uh, marriage practices, transfer of um, of uh, wealth, right? You, you may know that you know, some societies uh, who are patrilineal means that the land or whichever ownership is transmitted from the fathers to the sons. Others are matrilineal. Uh, that means uh, that uh, wealth and land and uh, last names and yeah, uh, all sorts of tangible and intangible aspects of, uh, of individuality, is, individuality is, um, is passed down through the, the mother line. Right? I'll talk about lines uh, more later. It's an important part of, uh, of the study. So yeah, the, the, um, the idea is that kinship terminological systems, so the way different family relations are named in language with specific terms, is a window into the, um, the world uh, social structures. Right? And this is a uh, this is a very brief summary on the, the different ways of naming cousins, right? Uh, and uh, these are, this is part of uh, Murdoch uh, t uh, terminology, who uh, call them the Hawaiian, Eskimo, Iroquois. So you see, for example, the Hawaiian uh, have um, yeah same terms um, for um, for male cousins and uh, male brothers, right? You see different colors for the triangles and the circles, which represent the, the, the gender uh, or the sex of the of the relation, and they are different. So that is is a, is a marked difference. And then, uh, the further down you go, uh, the more detailed information is encoded in the terminology uh, of uh, kinship structures who belong to the Sudanese um, yeah type. Those are obviously very. Um, we have reached the limits of what we call the Murdoch terminology. There are much more fine-grained uh, distinction that is currently needed to, to understand more uh, yeah, this, uh, social structures, but I'm not going to go into that today. Um, yeah, but so, and it's, um, oh, I suddenly hear myself. Um, if, you know, the, societies of the world have uh, specific ways of naming their siblings and that these specific systems um, give us an indication of the way societies are structured, right? who you're supposed to marry, who are you going to give your land to, etc. Well then, uh, yes, they, they have been uh, approached as a, as a window into the world uh, social structures. But of course you probably guess the, the, the limits of that, it's, it is based on terms, right, linguistic terms, uh, and these are uh, a number of shortcomings. It's not because you have, there is uh, a term in your language that you're actually using it. I'm sure maybe if we think for a minute in our own uh, uh, mother tongue, uh, we, we can think of terms that exist in our language but that we actually don't use. So what does that say if you include that to generalize over, well, this is how the society of uh, these people are structured. So, yeah, language structure, language use. And also, why only focusing on language, right? We do not only communicate through language, right? We gesture, we draw things, we, uh, yeah, we, uh, we use all sorts of different strategies. So, damn it, we should look into that, maybe as well. 
Uh, so yeah, gesture, right? A second window onto a group of, uh, of speakers' mind. So just a um, um, brief summary of some of the things that gestures do. Uh, well, they can create a special map of both concrete and uh, abstract uh, discourse uh, elements, uh, reference. Right? Uh, there are some studies from, from those uh, references that show that uh, um, gestures are used to identify and then refer back to characters in a story, uh, right? that you would place someone here in your story, and when you come back to that character, when well, you're going to point to that person, for example. Uh, so you kind of anchor people in space, uh, people or ideas or all sorts of things. Um, it also is used to express multiple viewpoints. Right? For example, the observer, the observer versus the character um, uh, viewpoint. Uh, and it also used to express relations. It's very useful with all these articulatory and spatial properties that just have, uh, that um, we use it for contrastive um, abstract notions. Right? There were some studies that show that with some regularity, people would say Republican versus liberal. Uh, the offense, the defense. So it is used to mark a, uh, a contrast of, uh, of, of relations in this vehicle. And um, yeah, which seem to indicate that speakers map opposing elements on different sides of the, the lateral axis uh, of the body. Right? There are a few, a few studies referred to here that have um, um, yeah, provided supporting evidence for this. So in some gestures function as an excellent resource for depicting underlying mental conceptualization and uh, visual special uh, mental imagery. Right? Um, so importantly for this study, cosmic gestures provide useful insights into how speakers think in ways that are not evident from speech alone. Right? If we look at the way people gesture when they talk about family relations using the terms of their own language, would we see gestures that align, complement the gestures that are being uh, produced, contradict, uh, say more than only what is uh, conveyed in, in a gesture. Uh, that seems like an interesting um, similar system to, to explore, right? And also, I mean, you, you see where I'm going with this, right? Viewpoints, relations, these are the two core uh, mechanisms of thinking about kinship and gestures apparently are used to communicate uh, those, uh, those processes. So, I mean, this is a good candidate uh, for, a, for a, uh, yeah, a useful semantic resource to talk about family relations. Right? So, uh, surprisingly, uh, you would think, well, yeah, gesture kinship seems to have so much in, in common. You would, you, would, you would expect a lot of studies to, to have been done of this. Actually, to the best of my knowledge, there is only two. Uh, one by, uh, by Enfield. Um, the body as a cognitive artifact in kinship representations, where he uh, he, um, he interviewed a uh, Lao speaker uh, and uh, looked at the way they yeah they, they gestured. Uh, so, for example, this speaker is talking about her father, and which is uh, she's placing in space here, and then later in her description, she has anchored her father's brothers right here, father elder brother F E B, and then that. Uh, that paternal uncle has a, has a daughter, right? Um, yeah. And so uh, Enfield has looked into this, and, um, and uh, Alice Gabby uh, also, uh, from a slightly different angle, but she, was, she managed to evidence some um, categorizing pattern in uh, kinship topology of the Cook Tayor, it's an Australian Aboriginal community, which were not marked in speech. So, um, yeah, but those are, to the best of my knowledge, but please prove me wrong, I'd like to know if all this exists. This, these are the only two studies that have used gesture to understand more about uh, kinship relations. So, uh, what are the questions that we have uh, addressed with this study? First, uh, do people activate a, some type of special template when they describe the structure of their family? Right? And can we find supporting evidence of this template in speech and in gesture and in drawing? And what structures this special template? Right? If there is a special template, what, it is, what is it structured by? Right? And the prediction was that it was going to be uh, shaped by cross-culturally shared cognitive mechanisms, 
like uh, perspective taking and, uh, and relational thinking, but also uh, we would expect that some specific cultural practices uh, would also, you know, shape it. If not, well, we would have only one kinship uh, system in, in, in the world. So there must be some, some type of uh, cultural specificity there as well. So the current study uh, was set in, um, in, uh, in Vanuatu. Uh, it's, it's an archipelago nation from the South Pacific. Right? You, if you see where Australia is, then you see where Vanuatu is. And specifically on the island of, of Pama, this tiny island uh, right here. Um, uh, yeah, there is around like 3,000 speakers in this, in this island. Uh, and there is a, a large community of um, uh, Pami speakers in Port Vila, um, uh, which is the capital of Vanuatu located here. And we worked with both uh, places. Right. Uh, and so this is, um, where am I? Are you here? This is the type of uh, data that we had. So um, audio video recordings uh, of uh, people talking about their families. I'll, I'll tell you more about uh, yeah, the elicitation process, but here's the type of thing we got. So, okay, I'm going to play this video several times, right? So uh, perhaps first you can focus on the, the English translation, if you will, right? To see what this figure is saying and now playing once again, you can look at the gestures and I'll play it maybe a third time and then you can try to look at everything. <laughs> <laughs> Amai ni visisi ale tarana kurmamana. Hey. Then maybe if you look at the gestures. Tapi ni mesti lu kasih tahu tarana far amisi. Kila pagurmamana ni kasih tahu amai ni visisi ale tarana kurmamana. One more time. Tapi ni mesti lu kasih tahu tarana far amisi. Yeah, so that's the type of data we work with, um, kinship descriptions uh, in PAMIs. Um, yeah, and what we want to see is whether, so it's doing all sorts of gestures, as you can see, is there some kind of regularity, some kind of systematicity, systematicity uh, across uh, speakers of PAMIs, right? Are these, as these uh, gestures, their direction, their, uh, the shape of the hand, all this, is this random? Or is there some, yeah, some common patterns? And if they are, also are there variations and what drive those variations, uh, right? Um, okay, so uh, a word on the methods. So. Participants uh, are 40 native speakers, 17 women, 23 men, uh, with an average of 39 years. Uh, 20 lived on Palm Island uh, and 20 in Paul Villa. Right? That was one of um, the things that we, uh, this study is part of a, a larger project called Polysemantic Communication. And um, one of the hypotheses that I had was that speakers who live um, away from their traditional island uh, who are in, in touch with other cultures uh, on a daily basis, may be less conservative on the conventions that they use to describe family relations and all that. Uh, it, it was not confirmed, uh, uh, but I also realized that the, the socio-demographics measures that I took were way too broad to, to find anything, right? Because people may live in Povila where I interviewed them, but I had no idea whether they have just moved there a year ago and if they spent their life on Pama and all that. So you need much more precise measures for this. And uh, so those were kinship interviews, right, following um, uh, loosely a script uh, by Enfield and Levinson, where I asked five questions about the participant's family. For example, I started with, please think about as many people who are part of your clan as possible. And uh, can you tell me who they are and how they are related to you and, and to each other, right? So it was semi-guided kinship interview. I, uh, I, I intervened as little as, as possible besides those questions. They were asked in, a, in PAMIs. They were asked by me, an outsider, and I can, I can address what motivated that choice later. Um, uh, and they were also given uh, a stick, 
right? Because I really wanted them to draw. <laughs> but I only told them, well, here's a stick. If you feel that it's going to help me understand uh, the structure of your family, uh, feel free to to draw stuff in the ground. Fortunately, only three out of 40 did that, <laughs> which was very disappointing. Uh, so uh, I'll, I'll show you some uh, some uh, some clips. The three that that draw uh, drew very interesting things, uh, but there were only three. So yeah, maybe we need to, to set up a more uh, controlled <laughs> experiment on that. Yeah, right, so they have the choice to speak as much, to describe as many people as they wanted or as few as they wanted, right? I, I did not prompt them to, well, please tell me a bit more. Uh, or, okay, let's stop now. You've given me 100 family members. I'm, I have enough. Right, I didn't interrupt uh, them. Uh, of course, I mean, those type of data is very noisy, right? There are so many things that come into place. But I uh, paid attention to... to uh, be as noisy as possible with everyone in the same way, <laughs> right? So that at least uh, we have some kind of compared, uh, comparable uh, basis. Right, so cutting gesture. Uh, are there uh, people among you working with gestures? No? no. Okay, you're lucky. <laughs> no, not, not you're lucky, or maybe you're wise. Uh, it's, uh, it's such a... Uh, such a long, uh, such a long thing to annotate, right? Like if you, if you have transcribed or annotate, sp um, written uh, linguistic data, and you think it's long, we're thinking about spoken data that you have to transcribe and gloss and everything. And this is nothing compared to coding gestures, right? <laughs> it can be everywhere, and, uh, and it takes ages. Um, um, yeah, so uh, here is uh, what, it, uh, what we came up with, uh, this grid, right, uh, which represents like the gesture space of the, the speaker uh, with a, a number of coordinates, uh, if you will. And so um, then we, um, for example, um, a gesture like this one. So again. Right, so this was coded as an M1, M8 gesture, right? And from middle, the middle level, starting from this coordinate to that one, right? M1, M8, yeah. Um, so that's, that's the way uh, we, um, yeah, we, we, we annotated the, the, the gesture coding. I have additional slides for that if you are interested to know a bit more. Um, yeah? Uh, so yeah, that's just just your uh, part. The, the the spoken part, yeah, I should have introduced a slide for this too. Um, there were um, the um, the linguistic uh, descriptions, the spoken descriptions. There were um, annotated with regards to their spatial semantics, right? Whether they there is some spatial component, right? For example, uh, you saw that man takes, uh, talks about. Mama onak, kur tata onak. Kur means to take, but also to marry. Uh, that counted as a, as a special semantics of the verb used to describe a, a marital relation between two fam family members, right? Um, so yeah, there were um, uh, uh, linguistic, was, linguistic data was annotated this way. Again, I'm happy to elaborate later. Um, analysis. So the first analysis that we performed with, uh, with this data was uh, how do PAMIs uh, speakers encode descent, right? So descent, remember it's the matriline uh, and the patriline. You know, some societies are matrilineal, we say other patrilineal. It's basically when we speak about on my father's side, I have two cousins, on my mother's side, I have only one, right? That's the lines, right? We actually have an interesting special metaphor in English too, between sides and lines and, um, yeah. Uh, and so, do they encode descent? Uh, because PAMIS is a patrilineal society. Uh, lands, um, last names, ownership, um, not ownership, um, belonging to the tribe goes through the, the fathers. Uh, when women marry, they, it's, it's a patrilocal exogamous society, which means uh, clans, men and women marry outside of their tribe. Uh, and, uh, and the women from other tribes come live on the territory of the husband's tribe. That's the patrilocality. 
and the exogamy outside of the of the clan, right? Uh, and actually, in the Pami's kinship terminology, uh, this lineage, this patrilineal uh, distinction with the father side, mother side, is encoded in a, in a, in the terms used to refer to uh, siblings of your parents from your mother side or the father sides. So you would call your mother, you would call her mum, but all her sisters, you would call her mum as well, right? Uh, but your mom's brother, you would call them uncles. Right? On the father's side, your father's brothers are your dads, uh, and they are called fathers, and it's not just a label. They actually have a, a social function that is very close to that of a, a father figure. They're, you know, okay, I, I should be careful with how much information I, I, I give. There is so much I can give, but uh, because I was going to say the matri, the the, the uncle from the, the maternal uncle is one of the most uh, important social relation in Pami society it, as a way to keep a strong link with the mother's tribe right that the mother has left for your father's tribe but the link that there is between a nephew a niece and the maternal uncle is the strongest he's the person who gives you um, your name uh, he's responsible for the costs that are associated with all in important life events uh, for boys circumcision uh, um, uh, weddings uh, and even funerals uh, if uh, if you if you die before your uncle etc so they have a very strong uh, very strong bond but sorry my point was that uh, there is a terminological distinction between uncles and aunts from two distinct sides right so this is encoded in a uh, this is encoded in, um, in the Pami's kinship terminology, but that's not enough to, to uh, infer that or because they have this terminological distinction, then they must think of those different sides in the same way. And we're using gesture to add another source of evidence, perhaps, to, to see whether, well, if they also mark this distinction in gesture, then we have more reason to uh, to perhaps interpret those results as, as a, yeah, they might think about different sides of the family in terms of space and on different special region of their uh, personal space. Right? That's the reasoning behind that. And then also about marital relations, right? How do Pami speakers encode marital relations in speech and whole gesture? And we selected the second one because uh, marriage practices uh, on Pama are fairly complex in terms of relational thinking, right? I've been working on this for three years now and I still struggle to to, um, to picture who you're supposed to marry. I'll, I'll, I, I will come back with a diagram. I, <laughs> I still need diagrams, it's, yeah. Uh, but it's fairly intricate. And because I was looking for markers of relational thinking, this appeared to be uh, uh, a great, uh, uh, a great relation to ask PAMI speakers to PAMI speakers to to, dis, uh, to describe, right? Because we would hopefully find some um, interesting diagrammatic gestures, perhaps. Okay. So, um, any questions so far? For okay. So um, here's the distribution of gesture lateralization. So there were, as you can imagine, plenty of uh, of gestures. I think. By memory, I have the paper here. I can't get those figures exactly, but it's around like uh, 1,500, I think, gestures that we that we annotated. But I mean, we had to be very conservative about what those gestures could mean, uh, right? So first, uh, because we were looking into like some type of special template, special map, we only uh, uh, included gestures that were produced uh, at the same time as some type of special semantics, right? Otherwise, it, well, it could be anything else. Uh, and also, yeah, so special semantics and obviously kinship relations, right? Uh, if the speaker is talking about something else, some kind of motion that they just came back from the market, you're obviously not gonna include that gesture in the, in the, in the data, right? So what appears uh, from this distribution, so you see the different, um, different variables here. So residence, right, Pama Island, Povila, and then uh, gender, male, female. 
uh, and also, um, well, lateralization, right? Uh, left side of the gesture space, my left side or right side of the gesture space. And what we can see is that, uh, well, there's a lot of, uh, when, uh, when, when PAMI speakers speak about their maternal uncle, their mothers, their maternal, maternal aunts, uh, well, they're going to place those people on the left side of, uh, of their gesture space 85%, 80% of the time, right? 85 is the number of gestures. Uh, and uh, when they talk about the father's side, uh, their fathers, their father's brothers, etc., 78% of the time they're going to place those individuals uh, on the right side, right? So that's quite an interesting finding that we, we thought because first, yes, they use gesture to establish a contrast, right? As other speakers, uh, I mean, from different studies might have done between liberal, Republican, offense, defense, right? There is this contrast. It was a bit to be expected, maybe. Uh, but the interesting part is that there is a specific side uh, to it, right? That, uh, that it's not just one is on one side and the other is on the other side. It's like Patrilli the, 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 the father's line is on the, on the right, uh, mother's side is on the left, right? So that was um, so um, perhaps a bit more detail uh, in how we we, we analyze this. Um, so um, excuse me, let me look at my notes. Right. So these these numbers, yes, you you got it. This left lateralized gestures, mm. and they were more common uh, when rel when speaking about their relatives on their mother's side, right? And so you yeah, have the counts, so those counts, they were analyzed as uh, generalized mixed effect models with gesture lateralization as the response variable and lineality, right, father side, mother side, uh, uh, of the described king, participant gender, and participant residence as predictors, right, as fixed effects, and random intercepts for participants, right. And then we did a model selection procedure followed by um, a model with random effects only as a starting model to which the fixed effects were added one after one. Initially as main effects only, and then as two-way interaction, and finally as three-way uh, interactions. So the most complicated model that could be identified within this procedure and without convergence issues contained the main effect of residence and the interaction of participant gender and lineality, right? And uh, yeah, I didn't write those, right? And this was significant. But the factor residence, was not significant in this in this model, uh, and so therefore we omitted it. Right. So residence here is Palmer Island or Port Vila. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. The speaker. <coughs> yes. Um, yeah, that was not significant. Difference. So we we took it away from the the model, and this is what this um, this figure um, visualizes. Right. You see some differences between uh, male and female speakers, right? The uh, colors are male and female speakers, uh, but uh, some significant differences between whether, um, when. So this is when, this is the estimated proportion of gestures to the right, right? And so to the right, uh, well then uh, speakers would uh, would refer to um, the battery line when they make gesture. To the line. And obviously, yeah, to the left, you have an inverse figure. Yeah, so we would interpret these results as uh, that descent is anchored in the gesture space, right, in, a, in, a, in PAMI's uh, gestures. Right? What about marking marital relations in, uh, in gestures? So, um, yeah, have, have in mind the, um, the gesture space, right? And here it was not just dots, you know, on this gesture space, so either on this side or this side. But here we looked at uh, vectors, right, uh, coming from one point to another. So the gesture space, uh, I mean, it could be, uh, you could gesture anywhere where you could, not in the back, obviously, right? But there is not more effort to do this or this or that than up or down, right? Uh, and, and what we noticed, is that, uh, well, first on the, the sagittal axis, right, 
you see like the numbers are much higher. And for example, up, but it's quite surprising that um, you know, there was very little uh, upward gesture, which is something that uh, we expected uh, somehow uh, following Enfield's work. Uh, you know, like there was a, a very clear uh, in, uh, in, Lao, uh, in Lao data uh, that, you know, fathers and then their sons and then their grandsons are organized on a vertical axis. Not so much. There are a few instances, but not so much. Right? And not for marital relations. Uh, this is only descriptions of uh, marital relations, right? Uh, so you see a lot of things happening on the sagittal axis, and um, and then you see um, something happening, whether um, with the gender of the origo. So what I mean by that is, for example, if I'm going, I was interviewed, and I describe. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I met my wife, uh, I'm, I'm married to, to my wife, she's from that place, etc. right? Uh, the origo would be male, right? Because it would be, would be, would be me, right? Uh, and uh, if, um, but if I was talking about, because they did not only talk about themselves, right? They talk about family relations, my, the, uh, my wife's uncle, uh, my uncle's wife, for example, right? Then the origo was also male. Right? But if I'm talking about the way that my mom met my father, then the origo was, um, was female. Right? You see what I mean? So this is what these two values mean. So when the origo was female, uh, then 25% um, of the time, we would have this, uh, this left diagonal gesture. Right? Like the one, if you remember from the video, Tataonak uh, kor mamaonak. Okay, yeah, well, that's a bad example because it's the other uh, origo. But, uh, yeah, my mom met my dad, right? When we had sentences like, my, my dad met my mom, you would have uh, this gesture along that other axis, right? Um, so, well, we interpreted this, uh, this, this result uh, as um, perhaps a... Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a bit more because you, I need to give you some, uh, some cultural information. So yeah, another way to, to summarize this is like when a marital relation is described from a male's perspective, my uncle married his wife, uh, co-speech gesture are significantly performed uh, in the left diagonal um, direction, right? And when it is from a female's perspective, my auntie married my uncle, then the co-speech gesture is performed to the right of the diagonal direction, right? Not systematically, but systematically, uh, significantly more frequently, <laughs> right? And uh, we were very conservative uh, with, with this. I think we, we were. Uh, we only kept 194 uh, <coughs> gestures uh, out of 501. Um, and um, yes, I can elaborate a bit what type of gesture we excluded, but so, yeah, imagine that I'm interviewing you about your family. Like one of the information that you're going to give me is going to be, uh, well, my mom is from Copenhagen and my dad is from uh, Malmö, right, for example, right? Uh, those people were interviewed outside on a small island. Uh, it is very imaginable that those people would say, my mom is from Lido village and my dad is from here, right? So this diagonal, could not count as a, as a left diagonal, uh, even though it was produced at the same time that my mom married my, my dad, right? So we, uh, as is common you know, in this type of studies, when, uh, when I interviewed the, the participant, I uh, took a screenshot of the, the compass, right, of my phone to have their, um, their orientation in space. And any time a gesture like this aligned with a physical landmark that was named, in the, in the in the description, we excluded uh, that that gesture, which was heartbreaking, <laughs> but uh, but necessary, right? I mean, that's that's a noise you want to get rid of. That's very frustrating to get rid of. Uh, I mean, we had more than a thousand. You you get um, almost eighty percent, right, of of gestures that we coded, and that's the long time we we we, get, we couldn't include them because, yeah.
it has to be I believe it had to be conservative so um yeah or also you know like you you may have people off camera that is this instance of this uh, of this uh, of this uh, this woman who is um, who's saying yeah i married george that that's the man standing there right so okay. so obviously this uh, was uh, was was not was not kept right and uh, we looked actually we looked at yeah a lot of things we look at gaze right as an indicator like if uh, the participant was not looking at me looking at the camera anymore like would do this, right? Uh, it was more likely than she was pointing to a natural physical landmark, right? That's that that has helped us decide. Uh, but in general, like when we had a doubt, and there were some elements of uh, of that, we excluded uh, that gesture. Right? Um, yeah. Here's the diagram that I can never remember. So uh, that's uh, the person that you are supposed to marry uh, if you were born uh, on Pama and you were born uh, a male, right? So that's you. You have parents, mothers, fathers. Uh, your father has a sister, father's sister. Well, he has probably many sisters, that's one of them. And she's married, that's her husband. They have children. Uh, among those children, there are sons, right? FZS, fathers, sisters, sons, right? So that person is your cousin. Father, sister, uh, yes, father, sister, son. And children from your cousin uh, and one of the daughter, right? Uh, one of your cousin's daughters, this type of cousin, she will be the person that you uh, you marry. One of the daughters is your is your rightful spouse. They could they call them straight uh, st uh, straight wife. Straight means. Uh, not straight in terms of sexual orientation. It, uh, there is this interesting special component to, uh, and when they say straight, they make a diagonal, which is a bit counterintuitive for us. But then when you think about it, say, well, yeah, that's as much straight as this is, right? But somehow for us in English, straight is this <laughs> vector, right? That's not straight, right? <laughs> but that here, 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 or here, that's straight, right? <laughs> So yeah, that's interesting. Uh, uh, interesting, another special semantics of uh, of, uh, of kinship relations in in Pamis. But so that's that's your custom uh, spouse, right? In a, in a, in Pamis um, society, if you are from a male ego perspective, uh, and if you are a young woman, right? Um, that's the same diagram, but from uh, another perspective, that uh, of a woman. So our parents, obviously, and you see that this is patrilineal because both, you know, both uh, diagrams, you're married to someone on the side of your father, right? Here. And same for the other, right? It's on your father's side. It's the patrilin patrilineality of family society. Um, yes, and that's this. Okay. Now you can see where I'm going with these nice diagonals, right? Uh, that conveniently, you say, are on the diagonal and right diagonal axis, right? And you would be right. <laughs> uh, if we didn't have the finding from the first analysis where the father side is on the right and the mother side is on the left, right? So I did not conveniently organize these diagrams because it fitted my second results, right? You see, do you see what I mean? No, right, is that okay? I mean, this could be reversed, right? Mm -hmm. And then the diagonal would not be in the right place. It would be in the other direction than the gesture, right? Uh, but here, I'm organizing this summarizing uh, 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 diagram based on the, the finding that the father side in the Pami's uh, worldview is anchored on the right side of them, right? Um, and when you respect this, uh, this, um, this special organization, well then you have this kind of diagonal. This is an interpretation, <laughs> right? Uh, when, um, when I've asked a uh, uh, participant, why do you do this or that when, when you seem to, to speak? And, and uh, yeah, there is, there is no very coherent answer uh, to that. I don't know if 
I'm not asking the question the right way or, uh, or if it's something that they may not be aware of. Uh, I don't know. Uh, they're aware of the father side, uh, the father side being on the right, the mother side being on the left. They say uh, it's on the right because uh, this is uh, this is the the big side, um, yeah, and on the left it's a little side. So it's still, of of course, this is the structure, but people have agency and they can do also what they want. They don't have to marry people they don't want to marry, right? And not anymore. Uh, so it is prestigious to abide by traditional ways and to marry the person that you're supposed to marry. And they would say that they take the high road, the big path, Marie Saucisse, the big path. They follow uh, the path of their fathers uh, to say they married the person that they're supposed to marry. But if you marry like someone from your mother's side also, uh, it's, it's, it's still okay. It's not as prestigious. But it's also, they, they call them avivicc, a small, small, small path, right? Because other people, of course, marry who they want because they, they love each other and they're just not related this way, so, yeah. But, um, okay, so um, that's what we can take from, uh, from t those studies. Uh, this study is like, well, if, you, if we want to know more about the way people think about the structure of their family, uh, well, Looking at language use is important because there may be terms uh, that exist in the language as documented by previous grammars and stuff, but they may not be in use. And if you want to has interrogate the way people think, uh, I think it's important to look at language use. And also like speech, gesture, and depiction, uh, perhaps, uh, gives much more uh, dimension, much more uh, perspective. Uh, than just kinship terminology, right? Because when you look at, um, at what information, right, patriline versus matriline, just gender of the spouse, descent, generational gap, um, in speech, well, you do, right? Remember that I told you, like, your mother's mothers as your, are your mother's brothers, you call them uncle, your father's brothers, you call them fathers, right? This is, this is marked and coded in, the, in, the, in language, right? But also in gender, right, right side, uh, left side. Uh, however, the gender of the spouse is not marked in, in Pamis. You, you tell them asok, that means my spouse, but it could be as much my husband as my wife. But this is marked in, um, in gestures, apparently, right, according to, to, to our study. Descent is not marked in, a, in, a, in speech, right, the patrilineality, the matrilineality, whereas it is in, a, in gesture. Same thing with the generational, generational gap, right? You noticed here that um, the, the wife is from a generation below that of the husband, which in practice, uh, family's family are quite big, like they have at least seven children per family, sometimes, yeah, seven to 12. So like there isn't such a, a big uh, age gap, you know, like if like you take the two extremities of, uh, of the family. Uh, but still, that's, that's one interpretation why we have this diagonal. I mean, we're guessing here, right? Heavily guessing here, uh, trying to make sense out of these diagonals. Why wouldn't it be just this, right? What would, would, it's not, there's not more articulatory effort to do that than that, right? Of this than that. Because this could be pointing to the, the side of the family where you are connected to that. But they don't do this, they do that, right? I'm guessing, right? <laughs> we, have to, we have to confirm that with other studies. And there is some anecdotal and evidence from, uh, from, uh, from depiction, right? So that's um, one of participants. He's talking about his parents. Alem, sister Nenti, me cognos. Stre, stre. Exchange. Okay. Right. And that's a very big family tree. That's one of the follow-up studies. Yes, yes. One, I have one minute. Yeah, yeah. I'll be done. <laughs> and that's when he's talking about marital relations, and he draws these crossing diagonals. And this young woman also did that, right? But unfortunately, it's only three of them, so it's it's hard to generalize from this. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit, it's not, not done. <laughs> 
Okay, so I guess, okay, I'll, I'll go fast. Uh, so, um, yes, I think we have an evidence uh, to, to, to say, we have enough evidence to say that Burmese people do activate a special template when they think about family, and that this is structured by relational reasoning and perspective taking, uh, which is perhaps cross-culturally shared, but of course we need, we need a comparative study to confirm that. Uh, and same thing for culturally specific social structures. Right, marriage practices and, and, and descent. But yeah, we need comparative studies to do that. Um, second point of discussion, uh, uh, our polysemiotic kinship system, polysemiotic gestures, speech, drawing, uh, as uh, our instruments can be instruments of cumulative cultural evolution. And that would follow the following argument, reasoning, right? So cumulative cultural evolution is the ability to observe, learn, improve, and transmit knowledge to our descendants. Transmission of knowledge across generations, for example, of social structures, right? That practices is achieved through the ability of a, of a community, well, to conventionalize this knowledge in a communicative system, in speech, but currently in gesture as well. When you teach your PAMI's kid uh, how they're related to that person that they live with, uh, you're going to say, well, you're supposed to call that person this and that, and then maybe gestures occurs at the same time, right? Uh, and so kinship terminology serve that function when, for example, they extend the incest taboo of marrying uh, one's siblings to one's cousin with the Hawaiian uh, example, right? So the hypothesis would be that, yes, polysemiotic kinship systems are instruments of uh, cumulative cultural evolution, right? So this is perhaps the hypothesis that this study has led to that I would like to, yeah, test in uh, future studies. And that's it. That's my funders. Um, thank you very much. Ihore <laughs> minuk.